Hey everybody and welcome back to another Dark Fall tutorial. So today we're going to be doing a VFX shot as you can see in the example here. As you can see we're going to be using Blender 2.8 so if you want to download that go ahead there's a link in the description. We're also going to need to download an add-on called Animation Nodes, which is a free add-on, and I'll throw a link in the description. So it's a free add-on by Jax Luke, and by the way, this is an amazing add-on. I've only just started to use it, but already I can see how um, how powerful it is, and you can go ahead and download whichever one you want. So once you've downloaded it, you'll need to install it into Blender, and again, once you've downloaded it, you can change this here to Preferences. Then we go down here to Add-ons, go over here to Install. And just find where you save that zip folder go ahead and select the zip and then install it so i've already done that as you can see here so again thanks to jacks for creating this because it's such an amazing tool anyway so now we've got this we can go ahead and save our settings we don't need to do that again go ahead and change this back to the 3d viewport so i'm going to go to file then new vfx now we have these windows and right now we don't really need this we can right click here just join this area Let's go ahead and load in the movie clip. So this is the movie clip that I'm using and we're going to be using this Taipei Tower. And what I want to do is just duplicate this tower a couple of times and create maybe a sci-fi beam of energy going between these towers. So let's first go ahead and set the scene frames. If we can see right now, we're only using 250 frames. If we go over here to set scene frames and click this, we can see we've got a whole bunch of frames we can work with. So instead, I'm just going to manually type some uh, values here. I'm going to start at frame 250. And then I'm going to end at frame, say, 500. And that should be good. So now we've set the frames, let's go over here to Prefetch and just click this. You'll notice this purple bar will fill up. If it doesn't fill up all the way, you will need to go to User Preferences and then to System. Just increase the sequence or cache limit. Just increase that enough and then come back. Then when you Prefetch, it should fill up all the way. So since the camera moves, we will need to track a few things and then parent any new object to those tracks so they move in place with the camera. Let's go ahead and track this now. Jump back to the first frame. Then over here for the match model, I'm just going to leave it at location. I'm going to change this to previous frame. And then go ahead and check normalize. Then the last thing I want to do is go over here to clip display. And I just want to enable the search size as well. Just then finally, let's go over here to track, just change this so we can see a preview of what we're actually tracking. So the first thing I'm going to track is this tower. So I'm going to hold control and left click. Scale this down a little bit. That's going to be my first track. So as I said, I'm going to copy this tower and move one over here somewhere. So I'm going to need a tracking point over here. I think I'm going to hide it behind somewhere behind one of these buildings. I'm going to track this point here. So hold control, left click. Again, I'm going to scale this down. Since there's some shapes that are very similar and if the footage was jumpy or blurry, Blender would just jump to this area. <laughs> so kind of keep that in mind as well. So that's going to be my second track. Then I'm going to add another one over here. So maybe we can track this point here. There we go. So now we've got these three. We can go ahead and press A to select all of them. Then we can go down here and track these forward. Or so now we've got the tracking markers, we need to create a couple of masks. We need to create a mask for the tower, then a mask to hide the tower behind in these areas here. So let's go ahead and do that. So we can either change this to the masking mode, or what we can do is go over here to the masking section. So I'm just going to minimize these, right click. There we go. So now if I click this movie clip icon, I can choose the type A video clip that we've been working with. Now the reason why I did that, changed to a different window, we're going to come back to the motion tracking in a little bit a little bit later on. So now we're in the masking mode, let's go ahead and click new. And this is going to be type A. So now we just want to go ahead and mask around this. Since this is a symmetrical object, we could. Uh, it would be nice if there was a mirror modifier for this. But I mean, I don't think there is. I looked around and there's no kind of, um, there's no sort of option for mirroring. I'm just going to mask around one side and then... Um, kind of copy it over here. So first, control left click, add your first point. Then I'm going to control left click. I'm going to do the same all around here. Just keep control left clicking. And then we can always come back and uh, refine the shape if we need to. You kind of want to get a good clean line between the building and the sky. I'm going to speed through this since it's the same technique. 
uh, up until we get to the halfway point and then I'll come back. So let's go ahead and do that. So now we've got half of this, I'm going to select all of it by pressing A, press Shift D, duplicate this, just move it over here like this. So now what I need to do is go over to the pivot point here, and if we change this to bounding box center, now if we press S to scale it, then I'm going to press X to constrain it on the X axis, then I'm going to press minus, then I'm going to press 1, then hit enter. Then it's kind of flipped it on the other side so now what we need to do is kind of join this um i'm not sure there probably is a way to join these two together now i've kind of looked around and not i've not found anything that tells me how to join these i mean we press alt c it just uh closes the masks or close the two halves so i'm not sure how you uh you join these but what i can do is right click on this one and then press l to locate this mask then press g then press x and just move it over like this just until these two lines overlap I also want to kind of line these up as well so press G something like this again you will need to come back and refine these since it's not perfectly symmetrical but yeah for these lines I want to make sure these lines overlap so do something like this just make sure they overlap same for the top two bring this down And then go ahead and tidy things up and if somebody knows how to <laughs> join these two masks then please let us know in the comments below there probably is a way so now what we need to do is parent these two halves of a mask to this tracking marker so i'm going to press a to select all of these since we already have this marker selected if we didn't just make sure you right click on this marker here by the way if you can't select it what you need to do is just zoom in a little bit then right click and then you'll be able to select it so make sure you select that marker press a then if we hold control and press P, we've parented this mask. So what we can do if we play through the timeline. So the mask will follow along this building. So now what we need to do is create uh, another mask. So I'll go over here, click new. I'm going to call this area one and two. Let's go ahead and start over here. So now I'm not too sure which position I'm going to put the building. I'm going to put it somewhere behind here. So I'm going to mask around a big section just to give me more options when I come when it comes to compositing. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, control left click. Then press Alt C to close the mask. Same thing as we did before. We right click, select this marker here, then press A, then hold Control, press P. Now it's been parented. Go over here to mask. We see this is that first layer here, so I'm just going to double click this and type left layer. Then I'm going to click this icon here so I no longer can select it. Click new. It's going to be right. And I'm just going to do the same thing for over here. Control left click. So now we have this, we can go ahead and uh, add the buildings. So let's move on to the compositing. As always, we need to check use nodes. We will be using render layers later on, but for now, I'm just going to delete this. Instead, since I have the Node Wrangler add on, I'm just going to hold Shift and press S. Change this to a movie clip. Go down here to the movie clip icon. Select our video clip. Now we need to add a viewer node, so Control Shift, left click on this node. There we go. Now there's one thing we should note, depending on which version of this beta that you're using. So by default, my blender has been set to a different um, color space. If I go down to color management here, down here we can see not only the look has been changed, but this hair has been changed to filmic. Now for most cases, filmic is a great thing to use, but I want to um, see the original. I don't want it to be changed right now. What I want to do is go down here to look, change this to none. But when we change this from filmic back to default, you see it changes quite a bit for examples filmic looks great and we might even change it later on but for when we start off i want to see what the original looks like again just check this color management when you first download blender and see 
what this um, option is. It may it may have changed since the time I downloaded Blender, but again, go ahead and let me know in the comments if it has been changed or if it's still the same. Okay, so now we have this, we want to kind of clone this building and move it across. And we did something similar to this in a previous tutorial where we used what, what I call the patch node. And we can actually use that same node. So if you did create a patch node or a super node, which enables you to move things around, uh, go ahead and bring that in. So that's what I'm going to do now. So I'm going to go to file, down to append. I want to go ahead and find my project folder that I saved the super node to. So once you're in the project folder, I'm going to go to the node tree. And this patch node, I'm just going to bring this in. So now what we can do if we shift A, go down to group. And we can then select this patch node. If you've not created this patch node, I will show you in a second um, how we can do this. I'm just going to show you how easy it is with this one uh, node. I'm going to plug this in here. Shift A, go to input, add in a mask change this to type A, plug the mask into the mask so we can see where, see the area it's been affected. Again, we could tidy this mask up a little bit. Also, I added some blur here so you could blur it as well if you wanted to. Let's go ahead and select this image and bring it in. Now we can reposition this, move it on the X. Again, I wanted to move it over here, so we also need to push it off into the distance. So I'm going to reduce the scale. Let's also bring it up a bit as well. So something like this. Again, I can always change this later on if I need to, but for now, that looks okay. Now it obviously needs blending in with a bit of atmosphere, but again, I'll come back to and do that later on. What we could do again is just shift D, duplicate this, repeat the process, and just move this over here. But, but for those of you who didn't create your own super node, I'll just show you quite quickly how you can do it without having this node. But I do suggest going back to the previous tutorial where we created this node. I'll throw a link up here. So let's go ahead and delete this for now. And I'll just show you how you can do it without that patch node. Shift A, go to color, mix, drop this in. So again, Shift A, add your mask, plug this into the factor. Then use that image, plug it into the image, shift A, distort, transform. Now we want to place this on the bottom string. And then when we move this on the X, we also need to move the mask. So let's duplicate this, shift D. Again, every time we move this on the X, we will need, we'll need to copy the value over and move it on here. So and an easy way to do that, if we shift A, go to input, add in a value node. And just connect this up to the X for both of these. Now we can control this. Like so. And if you wanted to do the same thing for the Y, you'd need to duplicate this. Plug this into the Y. And the same thing for the scale. So again, it's this is essentially what that one patch node is. It's just adding all these nodes and tidying it up and making it look better. So again, for the sake of saving yourself time, make sure you go ahead and create that super node. Doesn't matter what you call it, just make sure you have something that works. And then you can go ahead and create something very, very quickly. And you can go ahead and replicate that same process over and over. So, so I'm going to go ahead and just add these two buildings very So probably a few of you will be thinking, well, why don't we do this in Photoshop? Just add these buildings in Photoshop and then composite them in later. The reason why I like to do it this way, if there's any kind of lighting changes, all of them will be um, updated. If it was an image, it would tell that the building is fake since the lighting doesn't change on the flat image. So again, this is one of the reasons why I prefer doing it in Blender. But if you wanted to go ahead and add your buildings in Photoshop and then come back and composite these, it's totally up to you. You want to add some more elements, it's entirely up to you. So now I just want to add the masks to these in and make it look as though these towers are sat behind uh, these buildings. So let's do that. Shift A, go to color, mix. Drop this mix node in here. Then what we can do is just duplicate this mask node here, Shift D. Then I want to change this mask, so click this mask icon. Change this to area 1 and 2. And plug this into the factor. So now we can see the areas that will be affected. Now we need to grab the original movie clip image and just bring this over, plug this into the bottom. 
and there we go. If you, again, if you wanted to, you can add some blur to this mask and blur these edges. Shift A, color RGB curves. And for this first patch node here, let's go ahead and put this on here. Then I'm just going to click this point here and just bring this up slowly, maybe something like this. And you can see straight away it looks like it's blending in the distance, but we kind of want to match this or make it look a bit further away. So it's entirely up to you how you do that. That looks pretty good. Now what we could do is just duplicate this, Shift D. And again, we want to put this on the bottom image here. Now this is a bit much since it's a bit closer than this one. So let's reduce this a bit more. So if your camera is moving a lot, you will need to um, add some track position nodes like we've done in previous tutorials. So again, what I'd do is add in a translate node here, then add a track position node, connect the X and the Y, change it to relative start. And again, this is stuff we've done before. So if you're not comfortable with doing stuff like that, go ahead and check previous tutorials. But again, this is the same sort of stuff that we've done over and over before. So I guess you guys are probably used to it by now. Now I want to add like a kind of energy beam between these um, between these towers. And I was trying for a while to do that um, with normal composite nodes, but I just couldn't get the effect that I wanted. So, so that's why we'll be using the animation nodes add-on. Again, I'm a beginner with animation nodes. I've really just started using it. So there's a lot of things I still don't understand myself and I'm still learning. So, so hopefully you guys will bear with me with this. Also, I'll throw some links in the description to tutorials which I found helpful whilst doing this effect. Let's go back to the motion tracking. So now I've just closed this down here. Let's go ahead and set the camera. So I'm gonna press number pad one, control alt number pad zero. And that's just align the camera. As I mentioned, for this visual effects, um, we're going to be using the animation nodes, but first we need to create uh, an object for the animation nodes to use. So let's go ahead and do that. Shift A, go to curve and add a Bezier curve. It's quite small. Uh, what we need to do is straighten this up. So I'm going to tab into edit mode. You can see we have these two handles here. So I'm going to select this one. I'm going to right click on this, press R to rotate, then we'll press Z constrain it on the z-axis and then I'm going to hit minus four five just now it's been rotated minus 45 degrees on the uh, z-axis so now it's straightened up we have this uh, let's go ahead and press a select both of them then press w and then we want to choose subdivide and then we go down here I'm just going to subdivide this uh, maybe 20 or maybe 21 times something like this we have loads of these points here the next thing we need to do is go ahead and add some geometry to this. So go down to the object data tab. Then first we want to make sure that the fill mode is in full. Then down to geometry. And we want to change the depth. Let's say 0 0.01. We can always change this if we want. But now we have this, we can go ahead and uh, use the animation nodes. So let's go ahead and bring this section back. So I want to change this to the new window that we have that says animation nodes. So let's go ahead and click new for a new node tree. We can, so now we need to go ahead and build a whole bunch of nodes. <laughs> and again, I'll throw a link to the tutorial that I watched, but essentially I'm just repeating the process uh, that he did. And it's really quite amazing what we can actually achieve with the animation nodes. So thanks to Jax for creating this. This is a great add on and I'm ashamed for not using it sooner. So let's go ahead and begin. Uh, before I do anything, I want to press T to bring up this sidebar here and uh, uncheck always and we'll just check these three here now we can go ahead and start adding some nodes so shift a i want to go to spline and then uh, we want to use replicate so I'll drop this in and then we need to define which spline we're using so let's click this icon here since we have this bezier curve selected let's go ahead and click this so shift a to spline and we need to go to object output did this it kind of mirrors the uh, compositing that we're kind of used to with here's something we plug it into the output and that's what's going to be rendered kind of thing so it is kind of familiar but as you can see there's so many options that it might start feel it might feel overwhelming so um yeah don't worry about it it does get easier so now, so now we have this let's go ahead and click this plus button here which has now added a target if we can see in our collections we have this target here right now we can't see anything but we will start to see something later on so don't worry about that. Let's go ahead and plug these splines into this spline section here. 
and we also need to activate these so left click turn these on let's shift a the matrix and for this matrix we want to go to distribute drop this in here first let's change this from grid to linear we can go ahead and plug this into the transformations but we want to change this size to zero since we don't want to change the size now for the amount this is going to be how many of these kind of lightning beams or energy beams are, um, it's going to display so let's change this to maybe 15 or maybe 12 <laughs> and this can all be changed if we need to now let's shift a go down to sub programs and if you can't see it just scroll your middle mouse wheel until you find it then let's go ahead and add in a loop so let's go to new iterator and click new let's search for a spline list like now we can shift a to sub programs invoke sub program my loop and this my loop can be named whatever you want let's go ahead and rename this this can be energy beam so this invoke sub program will be added here in a minute and this will kind of call up the loop that we'll be creating so let's plug this into here and then if we go back to the loop input go to where it says new generator output click this and let's do that again spline list as soon as we do that we can see we now have this option here so we can plug this in and then let's go ahead and connect these up as well so now let's shift a go to spline and we need to add an info drop this on here and then we can see we've added this node here as well so let's move, make some space it's going to get a bit messy in here it's going to now let's change this from bezier to poly let's go to search let's type in vector noise there we go let's select this one so we can drop this in so now what we need to do is shift a go to vector separate i'm just going to place it up here like this let's connect this up and go shift a vector combine drop this in here now let's connect this x up to the x and the vector noise we're going to connect this up to the y you could shift d and duplicate this or if you've got the node wrangler add-on enabled we if we hold Control shift and then d then we can duplicate it whilst also keeping this connected so either way you just need to make sure that this string's connected and then we can and then we can use that the z like so connect this up to the points just increase this frequency for now we will play with these later on but now we've done that we can see if we select this uh, target here we can see what's happened we can see if we look up here we have 12 of them but they're all sharing the same um, information or this in the same space so let's go to the loop input and what i want to do is take this index and plug this into the seed and same thing for this one here into the seed now we get this down with these values here until you get something that works for you so for us i kind of want a small sort of energy beam i don't want it too much like um wild electricity i don't know if that kind of makes sense something like that looks good but we can play through and nothing happens so we want to animate this as well so let's go ahead and do that uh, shift a go to animation time information let's drop this in here so now let's plug this into the offset x now it's just added this i'm going to do the same thing here but for this one let's change this one to the y just to make it even more random so now we have this if we play through we have some crazy fast lightning <laughs> or crazy fast energy so if we want to slow this down we can just add one more node shift a let's go to number add in a math just drop this in here and what we can do if we multiply this and if you want it really slow let's try 0 0.01 play through still a bit too fast for me so if we wanted to we could probably reduce it even more by adding a zero and then maybe two let's see how slow this is so it's kind of slow kind of works i want to play around with this and keep changing it and playing and playing through to see if you've got the speed that you're happy with another thing we can do if we can see when we play through 
the energy beams. There's no kind of start and end point. Now what we can do is define start and end point of this energy beam. So it sort of tapers to a point. Let's go to here where it says splice info. We're essentially going to be replacing these three here. So shift A, go to list, and then down to slice. Let's drop this in here for now. Let's connect this up. We want to plug this into the list like this. So start frame zero is good. This one, we want the end frame to be one. Then I'm going to duplicate this again. So you can either press shift D just to duplicate it. Or you can press control shift D and duplicate it with the string still connected. So now for these values, we kind of need to know um, how many vector points has been added. So what we can do, if we go shift A, go down to where it says viewer, add in a viewer node. Let's drop this in here. And if we take where it says splice information and points and just plug this in, you can see we have 23 vector points. So that's good. So now for this one here, change this to 22. And then the end frame, end frame can be 23. I'm just going to duplicate it one more time. Control shift D. And then for this one, I think it's one. It's either 23 or 22. Okay, so this one here, this one to 23. I want to take this and plug this into the vector for this. Same thing for this. And the same thing for that one there. Now we have this. We need to combine these two. So day, go to list, and then we need to combine and then vector. Now this first one here, this zero to one, let's plug this into the top one. Then the second one, we need to go to this uh, combine vector here. This will plug into the second slot. And then we plug this one in here into the last one. And there we go. Move these two over and then plug this in. And then we have that taper in effect. And by the way, I had to work out all these nodes. It probably would have uh, drove me crazy as a beginner. So thanks to the tutorial that I followed, I think it was Chris Ninja, I think his name was. Apologies if it's wrong, but again, I'll throw a link to the description to that tutorial because it goes into detail and explains all the things that I'm just skipping over. So if you want to learn more about how to use animation nodes, definitely go ahead and check that out. Um, but now we have this, we play through, looks pretty good. So we see there it's not, it's not tapered. I need to change this to 23. That's uh, right, change this to 22. There we go. We go back to here. I uh, just want to, between the invoke and the object output, let's shift A. Let's go to, let's go to spline. Change type. Let's drop this in. I'm going to change this back to a bezier. So now if we shift A, go to spline, we can go to smooth bezier, let's drop this in. And we can see now we have these um, smooth noodly kind of looking um, strings. But again, you can drop that down, just move it down enough. Looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. Another thing you could do is randomize the, um, the bevel depth, which again, Chris goes into and shows you how to do that. I'm not going to do that in this example. Um, but if you wanted to, go ahead and do that. It's entirely up to you. Now I'll go ahead and finish this off. So now we want to add a background image. So uh, we <laughs> will need an image to render. So I'm going to go to compositing. And we press F12. Just give this a quick render. We have our image uh, and nothing else, which is good. That's what we want. I'm going to press Shift S just to save this. I'm going to go to my project folder. And then I'm going to save this as a reference image. By the way, I just want to turn that off. If I go to render, display mode, uh, image editor, I don't like it when it pops out into a new window. So there we go. So now I have this. Let's go back to the motion tracking mode. Now what I can do is add a background image, shift A. Go down to image, background image. And by the way, this will only work if you've got the add-on, um, add image as planes. Make sure you have that add-on enabled. Go back to where we saved our image. Load that in. Now I'm just going to press S and scale this up, just something like this. I'm going to select my target, which is that sort of energy beam. And let's go ahead and scale it up. Something like that. 
Now I'm going to need three of these beams uh, since I'm a beginner. I don't know how to duplicate this or copy this. I tried copying it as an object, didn't work. I obviously need to learn more about the animation nodes. Um, I also tried to duplicate it, but when you duplicate it, only one of them plays. This one obviously doesn't play anymore. So, so if you guys know how to duplicate this three times within um, the animation nodes, definitely go ahead and do that. And uh, go ahead and let us know in the comments below. What I'm going to do is just position this one beam render it out and reposition it, render it out again, and then position it the third time and render it out again. Pretty sure there is a way to duplicate this within animation nodes. It's just, I obviously don't know how to do that yet. So apologies. So let's go ahead and uh, move this over, rotate it on the Z and then rotate it on the Y. Something like that. That's pretty good. Just zoom in a bit. There we go. And we'll be masking around this, so you won't even see it. Right now we're finished with animation nodes. Let's go ahead and join this. Now I definitely need to go ahead and um, learn more about animation nodes. Ready, I can see it's such a useful tool. Um, let's go ahead and uh, render this. So go to compositing. Let's add this uh, render layers back in now to the setup. So today, go to color, mix, Shift A, input, render layers. Let's drop this in here. Since we've not rendered it yet, and nothing shows up, so let's hit F12 and re-render this. This is what we're working with. So let's go ahead and add an emission shader. So we want to make sure we have that target selected. Then go down here to the materials and add a material. Click this where it says surface, change this to an emission. Let's scroll up and find it. Then let's give this a nice bluish color. And then the strength can be, can be something quite high. The background is gray. So let's change the, the, the world settings. So go to the world properties, the color here, let's change this to fully black. And then let's go ahead and give it a re-render. So press F12 and we get this, which looks okay. It's not too bad hit escape. Uh, one more thing we could do is go to the render panel here, go to where it says bloom and just activate this, give that a re-render and there we go. We have an instant glow which looks nice. Now for this mix node since we just want to get rid of the black we can change this mix to a screen and we have this. That's pretty good and if you had all three beams you could go, uh, go ahead and add your color grading uh, and then render it out. And also what you would need to do if your camera is moving quite a bit, you'd need to track in this section here. So you'd probably want to go to motion tracking. Could add in the tracks that we had we added before and parent these to the empties, which, which would definitely help. Let's go ahead and move on to the rendering. What we need to do is go ahead to the output, which is here. Go down to where it says output. Make sure you set where you want to save this to. File format. Change this to an FFmpeg video. Then down to encoding, let's change this to H.264 in MP4 format. As soon as we do that, we can see the encoding has changed. And then again, you can and then again add some final color grading and uh, finish this off. We're here to render. Then you can either press render animation or control F12. Hopefully you found this tutorial helpful. I still need to learn more about the animation nodes, but hopefully you found overall you found it helpful. If you did, be sure to give it a like. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.